Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to go ahead and get started today for our webinar um, on career opportunities within FEMA, our career info session here. Uh, I'm Andy Dixon. I'm the Assistant Vice President of Marketing at Colorado State University Global. And I thank all of you for joining us and I welcome you to part of our career success webinar series. Um, we're excited today to have a very special guest um, from FEMA, and that's um, Ashley Lewis. And in addition to myself, uh, we have Dr. Michael Skiba joining, who is our program chair for our criminal justice programs. Um, I just wanted to, to start off by quickly saying thank you to everybody for your flexibility. Um, we appreciate, we know we had to move some things around from Tuesday, so thank you for joining or for registering. And again, anyone who's not able to join this remake of a session will be sure and send out the slides and hopefully you're able to view it then. Um, so just to get started, a couple quick housekeeping items before I introduce Michael for a quick introduction. Um, I wanted to, uh, to tell you a couple things if you haven't ever joined us for a Zoom webinar. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A button. Um, feel free at any time during the pre presentation, if you have questions for any of our speakers, you can go ahead and use that to submit those questions. And at the end, we'll have a quick Q&A and um, we'll moderate those and get to as many of those questions as we can. You'll also see a chat button down there. Feel free to introduce yourself there um, and tell us where you're coming from, what you hope to learn, any of those type of places. And, and if you are in some place warm, you can be cruel and tell us if it's warm there compared to some of our chilly people that might be joining from, from up north. So um, hopefully you're staying safe in this polar vortex. Uh, and finally, after the webinar, we'll send you each a copy of the recording, like I mentioned, especially if you're not able to attend today in person. So we hope you're able to view that or, or share it with others, and as well as a short survey. And we really appreciate you filling out that information so we can continue to improve on our webinar series and, and make sure that we're providing you with valuable information. With that said, I'll just go ahead and jump right in and turn it over to Dr. Michael Skiba. Uh, he's our program chair, like I mentioned, here at CSU Global in our criminal justice, emergency management, and, and fraud programs. He has over 22 years in the private sector and over 15 years in academia, and he's just going to provide a brief introduction to our programming here and CSU Global in general. Take it away. Great. Thank you, Andy. So, uh, yeah, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, again, thank you for joining. We're, we're definitely excited. Uh, to uh, discuss this uh, topic with you with you today. Uh, before we do, just a quick history on, on CSU Global. So um, as stated here, we, we are, you know, we take pride in being uh, the first online public state university. Um, and, and, you know, we, you know, our curriculum is, is focused uh, very much on the students, um, you know, and, and creating dynamic programs. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today is, is, um, you know, developing curriculum and programs that uh, that help our students meet their uh, successes and, and meet the demands of the, the current environment. Um, so, you know, we, we are really dedicated to, uh, you know, providing a, a really strong return on investment uh, through the careers of our students. So, and again, we're going to explore that today specifically in the emergency management area. So, but just a little history on CSU Global. Um, so as far as, um, as far as the FEMA integration, uh, so we have a, a very, very nice partnership uh, with FEMA. Uh, and again, we, we consider this a really, um, uh, you know, a value add to, to our program and, and how we work in synergy with each other. So we offer uh, uh, an undergraduate specialization uh, in both emergency management uh, and homeland security. Um, and we actually have the, the FEMA, uh, FEMA integrated uh, and intertwined in that whole program. Uh, so not only will, will students get uh, the, the, you know, content from the course, the core courses, but also uh, the, the FEMA resources as well. So we actually have uh, the FEMA IS independent study courses uh, within our courses. So the students, when they enroll in a CSU Global Emergency Management course, uh, will have the option to take those IS courses uh, within uh, the, the CSU Global course. Uh, and, and the added benefit will be that they will receive additional college credit for that IS course. Uh, they will also receive a certificate of completion uh, as well, for that IS course. Uh, and we also leveraged a lot of FEMA's resources uh, into the course room. So, um, you know, videos and, and different multimedia from uh, their libraries, we, we've, like I said, intertwined in the curriculum. So. And what we really do is, is really try to take, you know, uh, to offer the, the theoretical based uh, um, aspects of emergency management, but also 
kind of where the uh, the rubber meets the road, if you will, and how to actually apply that. Uh, and that's what we're gonna what we're gonna talk about today. So I would like to um, actually introduce our, our guest speaker. So uh, Ashley Lewis, uh, she's talent acquisition uh, specialist for FEMA. Um, so Ashley, I'll uh, I'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you so much, and thank you everybody for joining. Um, and thank you so much for your flexibility. Um, I know we had to reschedule this webinar, so I appreciate that. Um, and I'm excited to go over FEMA's opportunities with you and answer any questions you have. So let me go ahead and share this slide deck with you. Can you guys see that? Yep, good, Ashley. Okay, perfect. Just want to double check. Okay, so um, to start off, I wanted to go over FEMA's mission, um, which is very important, um, helping people before, during, and after disasters. Um, the mission of the Federal Emergency Management Agency is to reduce the loss of life and property and to protect our institutions from all hazards by leading and supporting the nation in a comprehensive risk-based emergency management program of mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. Okay, I'm gonna go over our organization. Um, so we do fall under the Department of Homeland Security. Um, and here are the different components. Um, we have FEMA, which is us. We have U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, Coast Guard, um, Customs and Border Protection, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, the Secret Service, and the TSA. Um, so with FEMA, we have over 20,000 employees. Um, and as you can see, we have um, 38.9% of those are minorities, 50 are female, 15.6 are veterans, 9.8 with disabilities, and we have 10 regions. Um, to quickly go over our regions, um, so first is our headquarters, which is located in Washington, DC. Um, and then our other regions consist of Boston, Massachusetts, New York, New York, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Georgia, Chicago, Denton, Texas, Kansas City, Denver, Colorado, San Francisco, California, and Washington. So our local functions within headquarters in DC. Um, so in DC, we set policies and administer programs we develop procedures and guidance, and we coordinate implementation with regions and field elements. Our local functions within the regions, so our regions are implementing and advocating, providing feedback on national programs and policies. Um, they're maintain maintaining awareness of incidents um, and any potential incidents that could occur, and they're also improving capabilities of the state and tribal partners. So our location functions field boots on the ground. Um, this really speaks to uh, the primary face and voice of FEMA with disaster survivors and community partners. Um, it consists of reservist and regional and headquarters staff working as a team to service individuals and their communities. Um, and I'll get into reservists in a few slides, but our reservists are our on-call employees that travel during the disasters or emergencies. Every employee has regular and recurring emergency management responsibilities when disaster strikes. So um, all emergency and major disaster declarations are made solely at the discretion of the President of the United States. Um, there are two types of disaster declarations provided for in the Stafford Act. Those consist of emergency declarations and major disaster declarations. 
both declaration types authorize the president to provide supplemental federal disaster assistance. However, the events related to the two different types of declaration and scope and amount of assistance differ. So the first one I want to go over are the emergency declarations. Um, this is when the president can declare an emergency for any occasion or instance when the president determines federal assistance is needed. Emergency declarations supplement state and local or Indian tribal government efforts in providing emergency services, such as the protection of lives, property, public health and safety, or to lessen or avert the threat of a catastrophe in any part of the United States. The second one is major disaster declarations, um, and this is when the president can declare a major disaster for any natural event, um, including hurricanes, tornadoes, storms, high water, um, tidal waves, tsunamis, earthquakes, etc. Um, and this is when the president determines that it's caused damage of such severity that it is beyond the combined capabilities of state and local governments to respond. A major disaster declaration provides a wide range of federal assistance programs for individuals and public infrastructure, including funds for both emergency and permanent work. When disaster strikes, we respond. Um, and that would include minimizing the suffering of the people, protecting their property, saving and sustaining lives, and just coordinating um, the federal operations and logistics overall. Um, and then we are also a huge part of recovery. Um, recovery includes individual assistance, community recovery, public assistance, and um, individual assistance um, and some examples of individual assistance um, would be crisis counseling programs for those um, who've been affected by any sort of disaster, um, disaster case management um, and individual and household programs. And then some um, examples of public assistance. Um, this would include assistance to the state, tribal, and local governments and certain private nonprofit organizations for emergency work and the repair or replacement of disaster damage facilities. This includes debris removal, um, roads and bridges, and emergency protective measures. Um, we also have what's called hazard mitigation assistance. Um, this is assistance to state, tribal, and local governments and certain private nonprofit organizations or actions taken to prevent or reduce long-term risk to life and property from natural hazards. Okay, so now we're going to go over employment variety. Um, so if you look to the right of the screen, the bullet points, these are just a list of um, our different types of positions within FEMA. I know when people think of FEMA, they immediately think um, reservist type work and our reservists are those uh, employees who are out in the field um, providing assistance to those who have been affected by, you know, hurricanes, tornadoes. Um, but really, we have all sorts of positions, as you can see, human resource specialists, logistics, um, program analysts, and these are just some of the ones I wanted to list. These are our major um, positions that we, we normally have um, a variety of these listed on USA Jobs. So I want to go over permanent full-time work. Permanent full-time employees are hired through a competitive process. This would include an application and interview. They may gain competitive status after one year of continuous service and full career tenure after three years of continuous service. PFT positions are competitive service jobs. This means that they are filled based on ability. The competitive process includes an application and interview, and there may also be a written test and evaluation of an applicant's education experience, and any other qualities needed to be successful within the job. Through fair and open competition, PFT jobs may be filled by previous or current federal employees or those from outside the federal government. Our next type of employment is called cadre of on-call response and recovery, also known as CORE. Um, these 
employees are hired to work for a specific limited time period, and it's normally between two and four years. These positions may be renewed if there's ongoing disaster work and funding is available. Core employees are generally eligible for the same benefits as PFT employees, but they do not gain the competitive status nor career tenure during their term. Core employees can be hired under a streamlined process instead of a competitive process. Core jobs are full-time positions for two to four years, and the term may be renewed, like I said earlier, if there is ongoing disaster work and funding available. Okay, so our reservist work. This is also known as our on-call or part-time employment. Um, sorry. So FEMA consistently seeks talented and hardworking people who are eager to assist disaster survivors and first responders on an on-call basis as a reservist employee. These are the main FEMA workforce during an emergency or disaster. Reservists travel, they receive training, they're able to build professional networks and support those in need. The work is on an on-call basis, so it is temporary work. Applicants must commit to working on an on-call basis and be available to travel within 24 to 48 hours, be deployed for 30 or more days, and possess a strong work ethic. Development. So our development, these are going to include our pathways program. So the first one I wanna go over are, is our presidential management fellows program. So this is for advanced degrees, master's, doctorate, or professional students who are about to graduate. Um, it also applies to recent grads um, who have completed an advanced degree within the previous two years. Our internship program um, does have paid opportunities for current students enrolled in high school through graduate school. Um, current students must be enrolled at least half time in an accredited high school, college, professional, technical, vocational, or trade school. Um, a little bit more about the internship program. It is normally posted um, to USA Jobs the first or second week of February. So keep an eye out for that um, within the next couple weeks if interested. Um, once it reaches, uh, I believe the max of 200 candidates, it will be taken down. Um, and I will tell you that if you do not apply within the first week, um, it's normally taken down within a week just because um, it is such a great program. It is a three month internship program, June, July, and August. Um, so it's perfect for the summer. Um, and basically it's whatever you're studying or um, your study of interest, um, we would place you in one of those departments within headquarters. Uh, that's normally where internship does take place, which is in Washington, DC. And you're able to learn um, the functions of that department and that area of study. So our student volunteer employment um, program, this is where we hire students to work at FEMA as volunteers. It is unpaid, um, but it, it does provide for valuable experience and it's directly related to your academic field of study. Um, you also, also may receive educational credit for the internship. FEMA Corps is very popular within FEMA. Um, it is, uh, FEMA Corps is, a, is with AmeriCorps National Civilian Community Corps program. Um, it's unique and it's team-based and it's a service program that gives 18 to 24 year olds the opportunity to serve communities impacted by disasters. Um, FEMA Corps members live, work, travel in dedicated teams and they serve for 10 months with an option to extend for a second term. They also earn a modest living stipend during their service and they do receive an education award upon completion of the program. So compensation, um, I'm not going to read all this for you, but um, as you can see our different grades, three through 11. Um, and then the salary is based on lo locality. So this one is based off the DC metro area. 
um, and then the education requirement is listed. If you just want to take a quick look at that, I'll keep this slide up for just a minute. And how to apply. Um, so that's probably the biggest question I get when I'm out working at hiring events and job fairs. Um, for our permanent full-time and core positions, um, and every now and then reservist positions, you do want to apply to USA Jobs. Um, it's very easy to just pull up USA Jobs and under keywords, you can type um, you know, the agency, just FEMA, um, and then the location of interest. I find it a little easier to just type FEMA in and then you'll get the list of all positions um, just to get an idea of what they all look for and um, if there's something that is not in your um, locality, you can always check back. Um, I just find it more beneficial to look through all the positions, see where you would be the best fit. Um, and if it's you know not in your location, we definitely have positions that are ever changing. So. Um, you might get on um, USA Jobs and see a position listed in Washington, D.C., and then it comes down the next day, and then it's listed in Denton, Texas. Um, we just have, we have nationwide positions, and like I said, um, they are updated weekly, so I would definitely continue to check USA Jobs for positions. Definitely read the job announcement. Um, uh, you really want to look at um, on USA Jobs just basic information, who may apply, job duties. The basic qualifications are probably going to be um, the main category that you want to look under um, because, you know, as the grades um, go up, obviously they're going to want more specialized experience. Um, so make sure you're looking at those qualifications and that you fit um, and that you've you know, you know how to do the position in terms of the different responsibilities and duties that they call for. Um, I know that with staffing, um, so I'm a recruiter, so I don't always review resumes. Our staffing team really looks at the qualifications to make sure that you would be a fit for the grade that you applied for. So, you know, if you apply for a, a 12, make sure that you do have the specialized experience, which will be listed under the basic qualifications section. So a federal resume is very different from other resumes. Um, I know people have this picture where it just needs to be, you know, you hear one page is best, but it's actually the opposite for a federal resume. We actually like to we like you to demonstrate your accomplishments and you know type out everything that you've you've done. We want to see all of your experience, all of your education, all of your training, all of your volunteer work. Um, the more the merrier. Um, we just want to see all the specifics. Um, even if there's little tasks that you did with in a position and you don't think it's going to be important, I say just put it on the resume because um, the more that you put on there, the better it looks, and we're able to get. Um, a better view of your background. So here are some resources. Um, we do regularly post job opportunities and we are, you can check us out on LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is updated weekly, so um, the different position types will be up there and um, locations. We are on Twitter and Facebook, so you can follow us on there as well. And then um, in terms of email, so our main email is fema-careers at fema.dhs.gov. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email um, that email address directly and just put in the subject line um, this webinar just so I can answer you because there are a few recruiters who share this mailbox. Um, and for development opportunities such as the Pathways program, there is a separate email for that. And then careers.fema.gov, this is where you're going to find a list of our openings. So if you, um, you weren't sure about going on to USA Jobs, you can just hop on careers.fema.gov 
and you'll be able to check out all of our positions. They are updated weekly, just like our USA Jobs is. And that kind of sums up um, the webinar. Um, I hope I can answer any questions if you have them and um, go over anything in more detail. So um, thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Ashley. That's some fantastic information. Um, and we do have a number of questions coming in, so I do encourage everyone to go ahead and keep those coming. Um, you can use the Q&A feature or through chat. I'm kind of monitoring both here with um, Lauren on my team here to make sure that we can get all of those addressed. Um, I'm going to start with one that's a little bit broad. Uh, it just asks, how much does FEMA focus on domestic as compared to international issues? Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I, I'm, I would say it's probably a, a split. I mean, I, I can't speak from, um, from experience, but um, that, that's a kind of question that I would probably have to ask um, leadership because I just don't have the statistics on that. Um, but just to let everybody know, if you have qu specific questions that I'm not able to answer them today, um, I can definitely um, email you um, or find a way to get that answered for you. I actually was supposed to have a hiring manager on the phone or on the webinar with me today to answer specific questions like that. And unfortunately he could not be with us today. So um, I can definitely uh, jot down those types of questions and, and get back to you on those. Sure, and if you want to just send anything to me, Ashley, we can make sure and send it out after the event as well. Okay. Um, let, let me ask a, a follow-up question that might be more specific to, to what you do with FEMA. Um, are there jobs that require international travel and, if, and are posted or are, are constantly international? And specifically, we did have another question come in, if there's opportunities to work within Puerto Rico. Yes, so um, our reservists do travel um, quite a bit because our reservists are the ones who are being deployed out to the disasters. Um, and Puerto Rico, um, I know we have a, a majority of our reservists are actually, they've been out there for months. Um, so yes, if you are interested in helping um, and say within Puerto Rico, that would be something you would want to email your resume in for to be reviewed. And under the resources that I had sent out, that would want, you would want to send that directly to the FEMA careers inbox um, and just put in the subject line, you know, reservist, or you can reference this webinar as well. Um, and just let us know what type of reservist opportunity you would be interested in. Um, like I said, some reservist opportunities will be posted on USA Jobs, but for the most part, we normally have people just emailing us their resumes when they want to help. Um, during a disaster and we just review it straight from our email box, which is actually a lot easier and we're able to send it directly to the hiring manager for review. So um, I would encourage you to go ahead and send your resume um, into that careers mailbox. That is a great tip. Um, in, in general, I know in addition to, I guess, technical qualifications for specific jobs, what are the types of qualities and skills and, and attributes that FEMA would look for from its applicant? Um, well, that would obviously depend on the position. Um, so I can't speak for every position, but um, I think overall, when we're reviewing resumes, it's just very important to make sure that when you're applying for a position that you meet those, that qualifications section, um, that's the most important. That will include the duties and responsibilities. Um, and you wanna make sure you have those lined up in your resume so that we can look at it and determine whether you fit. Um, another thing is under qualifications, uh, there will be a specialized experience section and that is very important. Um, basically, if you do not meet the specialized experience, then you would not be a fit. So um, I really can't speak to one position, but I can say that is what we look for um, almost immediately are the qualifications. Great. How long does the application or employment process take with FEMA on average? I will be completely honest with you and say that it is a definitely a time consuming process. Um, I would say on average, three to six months. Um, I know in my situation, I it took about 
six months after I applied to USA jobs, but I did get a call six months later and I was, you know, called in for an interview. And then once you get that interview, um, it's, it goes pretty quick from there. Um, you do have to go through a background investigation. So that does take a little bit of time, but, um, in terms of, you know, the application process, you probably will hear back within three to six months from the HR specialist. Um, another thing I do want to add, um, when you are applying to USA Jobs on the vacancy announcement, if you scroll all the way to the bottom of that vacancy announcement, there is an HR specialist listed. It has their personal email address and their personal phone number. Um, I think a lot of people miss that when they're applying. So if you apply and you're ever wondering where you are um, in the process or you have questions regarding that particular vacancy announcement, just go ahead and call that HR specialist or email them and they should get back to you, um, you know, within a couple days to answer any questions you have. Great. Uh, this one might be for you, Ashley, and it might be a little bit for you as well, Dr. Skiba. Um, is the FEMA Emergency Management Independent Study different than or related to the EMPP academic courses, academy courses? Are they related to basic advance or the executive academies there? Yeah, I, I can feel that, Ashley, for sure. Yeah, um, great, great question. So, yeah, the EMPP, the Emergency Management uh, Professional Program, FEMA offers, they, they, they have the three academies. So the, the Advanced and Executive Academy uh, has four, uh, each has four resident courses. Uh, and again, they're residents, so they're, they're um, you know, on, on site. The basic, uh, the basic, Academy has, I believe, one, I think it's six courses. Um, but as a prerequisite to apply to the basic, um, you have to have all six independent study courses. Um, so, you know, starting with the IS 100 course, the int intro to uh, intro to incident command, all the way through IS 800 national response framework. So, those six courses are the ones we offer in our CSU Global um, coursework. So, so this, this is kind of what our thinking was, is when you're going through the undergraduate program, um, you know, you're getting a degree, um, you know, in this field, but also you're working towards the ability to apply uh, to that basic uh, academy. So, so even to apply for that EL, EL0101, which is the basic academy uh, foundations of emergency management. That's the first one you take in residence. To even apply for that, you have to show that you completed those six uh, six IS courses. Great. Thanks for that info. And it leads directly to kind of our next question we got. And this one is back to you, Ashley. Um, you showed that nice chart of the different like uh, educational requirements and salaries that may change off of that. Do you have a general idea of how many FEMA jobs require a bachelor's degree or require a master's degree or those advanced PhDs and things? I don't only because all of our positions vary so much. Um, you know, in the IT field, I know that a lot of them require um, bachelor's, master's, but then in the more administrative roles and the program analyst roles, um, they're, you know, some of them don't require that and they just look at, you know, experience. And then there's some positions that, look at both. So they want to see a bachelor's and or master's and or, um, you know, this amount of experience. So um, if you go ahead and look at our vacancy announcements on USA Jobs, each position is very different, but it will break it down for you on what they're looking for for that particular vacancy. Um, I, we have a question here for somebody who will be 25 in May and wants to know if it'll be too late by then to apply for the FEMA Corps positions. Um, so the FEMA Corps, I'm not exactly sure when that opportunity um, opens. I can, that is something that I'll definitely get back to you about. Um, if it opens uh, before they turn 25, then um, no, I mean, they could definitely apply for it, um, but if it would be after, then unfortunately, yes, they, they're only looking at um, 18 to 24 year olds for that program. Okay. Um, still getting some more in here. Is there a place to find an example of a federal resume, since you mentioned they're a little different than your standard resume? Um, that is funny that 
somebody asked that because today I actually received a, um, an email from someone on the staffing team who was looking for that. And I said, that's something that we should have in place. But so that is on the staffing side. Um, that would be something that one of the supervisors would have. And I can absolutely share that. Um, I just don't have access to it right now. But um, I can definitely get access to that and then maybe send it out if that would be helpful for students. Please, yeah, I think that would be very helpful. And it's something that we could upload to our career center as well to make that available as kind of a permanent thing. I think that's a, a fantastic, I, I personally had no idea there was a difference between the two. So I appreciated <laughs> learning that and, and uh, would love to share that information. So yes, if you could send that off to me, we'll make sure and include it in the recording as we get this uh, webinar sent off to everybody. Absolutely. Okay. A um, couple questions about the background check you mentioned. Are the background checks about uh, your credit or felonies? And is it about um, credit or some less serious crime if I'm trying to piece together? It right. is all of the above. So um, it looks, I mean, the background check is just, um, it's where you've traveled, where you've lived, um, you know, uh, it's it's everything on that list. It will it will look at everything in your background. Okay. Um, so again, generally speaking, here obviously it might depend on position a little bit. But is there a good feel to earn your master's degree? And do you look for criminal justice, for example, master's degrees compared to leadership or other fields? Um, I'm sorry. Was that question for me? Yeah, and Ed, as far as when FEMA looks at employment, th does it matter what your degree is in, I guess, for either bachelor's or master's to make it a little bit broader? Um, no, there's, normally it's not just a specific um, master's. Obviously it will need to, you know, relate a little bit, but it's not like, you know, if they're applying for, just for an example, an emergency management specialist, and it calls for a master's in that, if they had it in criminal justice or something related, that's great. Um, if it was in philosophy, then they're probably, I, I mean, they're probably not the best fit for that position, but um, yeah. <laughs> sure, sounds good. Um, I think I've covered most of the questions here. If you, anyone has any extra, please feel free to type those in really quickly. Uh, I do have one more on my list here. So if someone has a military background, does that play into their um, qualifications for a role? And is there a best career fit at um, FEMA related to that military background? Yes. So um, if they are military or were military, um, they will get basically a preference. So they would want to look at the permanent full-time positions because those are the ones that they will get uh, like veterans preference for. Um, and that's, yes, that's, that's huge for FEMA. Um, we definitely want to put those who have served, uh, served, First, so I would say look at those permanent full-time positions on USA Jobs, and um, that would give you a, a leg up. Great. Just had one more question come in, and this one's for you, Dr. Skiba. Does CSU Global have any plans for masters in Homeland Security or Security Management? Mm, that's a, a great question. Uh, I would say uh, my Christmas wish list late, absolutely, because <laughs> I I see a lot of. Uh, value of course uh, and trending i think this in my opinion is one of the um you know really hot strong areas uh, of our uh, time right now so we do have the the undergrad specialization in, in emergency management and homeland security so i don't know if I, I mentioned that earlier um so we do have the specialization in homeland security as well structured the same four courses in addition to the, the bachelor's um but we do not have a master's specialty in that yet but um, this would be something I'm absolutely looking into. Um, and even, uh, I've even explored a standalone degree as well. Um, so I'm kind of uh, looking at some curriculum options for, their, uh, for that program. So that would be, um, you know, a, a specific bachelor's degree in emergency management, or Homeland Security. Um, so this is something that I started putting in motion about six months ago. And, and um, you know, I'm starting to put some pieces together on that now. Um, so I would, love, I would absolutely love to see that. But what we did do, um, important note, what, in lieu of that, what we decided to do at the beginning of, the, of uh, 2018 
we took all of those eight courses um, and completely 100% revised those. Um, we brought in content experts, subject matter experts uh, directly from the field, from the industry, from faculty. Um, and we really um, just completely amped up those courses uh, with, with, you know, critical thinking and all these, these skills uh, that, that we know are needed to, to operate in FEMA and in, in the EM field uh, in general. Uh, so those courses are real fresh and, uh, in my opinion, uh, real, uh, real exciting. And, and you did say you're looking to either bring a concentration or something at the graduate level as well, potentially down the road? Yeah, correct, correct. So, so um, this would be, I'm thinking the same thing, maybe an additional specialization, but maybe at the master's level. Mm -hmm. Correct. So basically taking the structure undergrad and just moving it up to a grad level and then adding adding some additional components with that, uh, which would be needed at that advanced degree, uh, such as maybe leadership, uh, you know, maybe global scope, um, you know, uh, things like that. So, uh, but yeah, that, that's definitely absolutely on my um, on my radar and things that, again, this is not I mentioned wish list, but this is something I've actually put in process already uh, to, to start from a structural basis curriculum level. So. Fantastic. And I think we have one final question here and then we'll cut it off. Um, and this is another one for you, Michael. Does CSU Global hire graduate alumni as instructors? We absolutely, um, this, this is one thing that, that we, uh, we look for um, in, uh, uh, in pretty much all of our, all of our areas. Um, but yes, a short, short answer would be, would be yes. I mean, if, if this is something you're looking to get into, um, you know, into teaching and then, you know, absolutely. You can connect with me offline as well. Um, you know, we can figure out a way to uh, connect me and I can absolutely, um, you know, talk to you directly or I'll put you in touch with our lead faculty uh, in that area and we can talk about um, options there for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put your email address and my email address into this chat here just so if people do have questions, we are happy to answer any additional ones of those offline, so. Um, uh, so I have one final question that I can actually answer myself. Yes, all of our masters and bachelors are online fully because we are a fully online university. So everything we offer is specifically online. So no matter where you live, you have the option to do it. Um, thank you everyone for your wonderful questions. That uh, was covered a, a lot, I think, uh, within a, a great follow-up to, to Ashley's presentation. Thank you very much, Ashley, for joining us. Any final thoughts from you or any final well wishes? <laughs> Just thank, every, thank you everybody for um listening and um, please feel free to email me at fema-careers at fema.dhs.gov if you have any additional questions for me. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I did put that within the chat as well. Um, and we'll get out any additional information, any other questions um, as part of that follow-up email that has a recording for this. You can share it with others and, and review it uh, at a later date. Um, to get some of these questions answered, we'll give Ashley a little time to maybe send me and, and Dr. Skiba some of those answers. So don't expect that right away based off of some of the uh, questions I heard, the great questions. So I'd rather make sure we can be as holistic in getting those answered as possible. So thank you everyone for attending. Again, we appreciate all of your time. Um, thank you, Dr. Skiba. Thank you, Ashley, again for, for your time. And uh, we look forward to uh, hearing from you again and, and anything else we can do to support you in this. So have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much.